Hello everyone and welcome to Thought for the Week. Do you remember I said we'd think about some parables, those stories with meanings that Jesus told? Today I want to think about a parable that we sometimes call the parable of the three servants or sometimes we call it the parable of the ten talents. Now, the word talent in this parable doesn't refer to a talent that we have like a skill or a thing that we're really good at. Although you might find it useful to remember the things you're good at in we, this parable as we go along. Instead, the word talent comes from a very old word for money and it refers to a large amount of money, the amount of money that would be enough for a family to live on for a whole day. To help us think about this parable, I'm going to use a word for some money that we're used to in England. So instead of talking about talents, I'm going to talk about pounds because we know what a pound is, don't we? So for every one talent, in the story, I'm going to talk about one pound like this. And this is how the story goes. A master was going on a journey and he called three servants to him. And he said, I'm going on this journey and I'm going to give you something that I want you to do. I want you to look after some of my money for me while I'm away. The servant he trusted the most, he gave 10 pounds, maybe a 10 pound note like this one. And he said, look after this 10 pound note for me and see what you can do with it and let me know when I come back. The second service servant, he said, here's five pounds. See what you can do with this and I'll find out when I come back. And the third servant he gave one talent, one pound in our story. See what you can do with it, tell me when I come back. And he went off on his journey. The servant who'd been given 10 pounds went off and found a way to raise more money from it. Now, I wonder what you could do if I wanted you to turn this £10 into ten more pounds so that it became £20, how would you do it? Well, you're not going to magic another note, are you? So you'd have to take a risk. In order to make this into more, you'd have to take a risk of spending it. You might say, right, I'll take this £10 and I will spend it on £10 worth of ingredients for making cakes. And I will bake lots and lots of cakes and every cake I sell, I will sell for £2. And I'm going to make 10 cakes. Now, if I make 10 cakes and I sell them all for two pounds, how many pounds have I got at the end? Do you know the answer? It's 20 pounds, isn't it? Two times 10 is 20. And so I will have turned my 10 pounds into 20 pounds by selling cakes for two pounds each. Now, I don't know what it is that the servant did, but he went and he took the risk and he spent the money he'd been given and used it to make more money. The servant who'd been given the five pounds did the same thing. So he spent the five pounds, that's taking a risk, but what he bought with the five pounds, he was able to use. Maybe he made things and he sold them. And so he turned the five pounds into 10 pounds. He made money by investing it. That's the word we use, investing. When we take that risk to try to make one piece of money worth a bigger piece of money. 
I wonder what you might do to make five pounds worth of money into 10 pounds worth of money. Could you make something beautiful? Perhaps you'd spend your five pounds on some card and maybe some lovely stickers and make birthday cards. And if you had 10 cards and a lot of lovely stickers and you made 10 beautiful birthday cards and sold them all for a pound each, then your five pounds would have become 10 pounds. Now the third servant was very afraid of his master. He knew that the master was quite a hard master. He expected things of his servants. We've worked that out, haven't we? This master expected his servants to use his money well. The third servant was frightened because there's always a risk. If you spend the money you've been given and you buy something and you make something and you try to sell it, what if nobody wants to buy it? Maybe you'll end up saying to the master, my hands are empty, I haven't got any money at all. I spent it and I haven't managed to make it turn into any more money. I couldn't, I couldn't sell what I, I made. And he was afraid and he wanted to make sure that the master got his money back. So he took it and he buried it. That way he knew it was safe. And when the master came back, he could dig it up and say, here it is, here's the money you gave me. I've kept it safe for you. Well, the master came back and he said, how have you done? And the first servant was able to say, I've taken the £10 you gave me and I've turned it into more, into £20. And the second service servant said, I took the £5 you gave me and I've turned it into more. I've made it into £10. And the third servant said, I was afraid of you, but I've kept your money safe. Here it is. And the servant had let the master down because he wouldn't take a risk. The master was very pleased with the first servant and gave him even more money to invest. And he was very pleased with the second servant and he gave him even more money to invest. But he was cross with the third servant. He said, you could at least have put it in the bank where it would have earned some interest. And then at least my one pound would have been turned into maybe one pound and one P. That would have been more than just one pound. You didn't try. Sometimes we have to take a risk. We take a risk and maybe we make more money that we can give to charity to help others. If you've ever had a baking sale at school or made something to sell at school, maybe to raise money for charity, that's taking a risk and investing our money. We take risks in order to earn more. And God actually does want us to do that. I wonder this week whether you might be able to think about investing your gifts and talents. Perhaps you're good at singing or at doing keepy-uppies. Maybe you'll be able to invest your skills. It doesn't always have to be money in order to do something, to grow your own talents or to make money for others or for charity. I'd love to know how you invest your talents or even your money if you've got some. But it's not all about money. It's about your gifts and talents as well. Invest them, grow them, see what you can become. Now, let's say a prayer. Remember, at the end of this prayer, if you agree with me, say Amen. Dear God, thank you for the gifts and the talents you have given to us. Thank you that some of us are good at sport and some of us are good at sums and some of us are good at reading. Some of us are good at music or drama or art or cooking. And we can use our gifts and skills in order to make more for ourselves and for others. Help us to invest our talents and our money, if we have it, to help others. Amen. So here's your challenge this week. Invest your talents, whatever they are, to do the best you can for yourself and others. And meanwhile, I've got some money here that I need 
to invest and turn into something more for someone else too. Have a lovely week. Bye-bye.